my friend to sports now. And uh, well, Judge Andrew Jones, obviously the Rugby and Sports Editor of the Sun News by Press. Thank you for coming on. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. We're looking through some of the back pages today where uh, uh, the President is said to have been shocked about this entire scenario. How do sports journalists actually internalize that message or that report before putting out that, that the President was shocked about what's going on? Does it mean that they've not been communicating and giving him? the true picture of what is going on? Well, Jim, I think it is possible that <coughs> the president, uh, I mean, is a very busy person, and uh, he, he has uh, people who are actually in charge of the press sectors uh, in the, uh, of uh, the nation's life. We have a minister of sports who should be briefing the president, bulletin the Federal Executive Council will be coming up tomorrow, Wednesday. But I think uh, that uh, we've taken the charity that is going on in Nigeria football to the highest level, to a ridiculous level. I mean, thank God that as we speak now, the hammer from FIFA has not come. Because will it even come? If we continue the way we are going, Chamberlain, it will definitely come. But let me tell you one thing. FIFA is not really interested in banning any country. FIFA will not take, uh, derive any joy in seeing Nigeria not being part of its family. Uh, you understand me? So, but what FIFA is saying is that we should do the needful. We should respect the status of football, which we are not doing at the moment. And if this rubbish we are doing at home continues and it attracts FIFA sanction, then we begin to blame ourselves. And I don't think that we are doing the right thing because we need to tell ourselves the truth. The Bible says that it is only the truth that can set you free. But the way the stakeholders are going about it in this country, they are not telling themselves the truth. They are deceiving themselves. And at the end of the day, it is the country, Nigeria, that will suffer if eventually we are banned. Come to look at it, just on, on Saturday, we celebrated the victory. That shows you the character, what Nigeria can do. We just won uh, the African Women's Championship. And the Minister of Sports was there to go and celebrate, to cheer these girls and bring the trophy back home. Is he not happy with it? If tomorrow we are banned, will Nigeria get that kind of leverage again from football? The answer is no. So the earlier we do the needful, the earlier we respect FIFA statutes, the earlier we play to the rules, the better for us. But at the moment, Chamberlain, we are not just doing that. Let's talk about the role of the Minister for Sport here. Because in this particular report, when uh, the courts, I think it was in Joss, when there was that ruling, a just high court, which nullified the election that ushered the, <coughs> excuse me, the board of the uh, Nigeria Football Federation on September 30. Thereafter, the, the minister, Tommy Danagogo, immediately appointed a new secretary to run the affairs of the federation after the World Cup. And so the report here says that he did that because he did not know that, uh, well, FIFA doesn't like matters going to civil court. There's court of administration for sports. And so when you look at this kind of scenario, you ask yourself, wait a minute. But okay, now that he knows, what about this current or how is he dealing with it? Well, the minister may not have been uh, in sports administration before now, but I know that he is somebody that follows sports generally. Even the layman out there follows sports generally. And he is a lawyer. He should know a few things, whether he is in or out of sports. First and foremost, you don't need to be in, involved in football to know that football matters are not taken to the conventional courts. If football matters are taken to the conventional courts, the game will not move forward. And that is even the challenge that we face as a country when you talk about fighting crime and fraud, for instance. If EFCC, for instance, has a specialized court where they handle corrupt cor cases of corruption, the better for us. But if you take it to the conventional court, that is why people go away with their loots. If you look at the electoral uh, issues, uh, if, you are, if you are aggrieved after any election in Nigeria, you don't go to the conventional court. There is a, 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 an election, electoral tribunal that is set up, isn't it? So the same thing in football. It's not as if you don't have a place where you can go to in football to lay your complaints and get justice. No, there are places, but it's not the conventional court that will rush to here in this country. You go to your village or somewhere to go and get an injunction to stop the game from moving forward. That is wrong. If you know you are aggrieved, you go to the Court of Arbitration for Sports. 
as we speak now, the former coach of the former assistant coach of Super Eagles, Silva Nozopala, has gone to CAS to challenge the way he was sacked from the Nigeria by the Nigerian Football Federation. That is what it should be. By the time he gets judgment in CAS, Opala should have jolly well gone to Enugu to go and get one injunction from a high court to stop us from playing football. But he has not done that. He has taken the right channel, which is going to cast to go and challenge his uh, sack. So because, because the way it is is this. The same if, way. If anybody approaches the regular courts, yes. the courts cannot turn you back. So no, what, but what, what, even, what? Even, even the courts know that there are Astak losses. I don't need to be a lawyer to know that there are Astak losses. If I am a judge and I know that this country, I have the interests of this country at heart, I will tell you to go and seek your grievances in the right, through the right channels. Okay, does it mean because that? Because we, we'll be making a mockery of ourselves if we go to God to go and get injunction when you know that this is not the right channel that the person who is aggrieved has come to. So if we're part of that uh, FIFA... We're part of FIFA and we should respect FIFA statutes. So if we, if, we sign, the, if we signed up to those statutes, yes. what about uh, the councils of the NFL? Does it mean that those statutes or the principles binding us with those statutes are not tenable in court to the extent that they say, well, uh, my Lord Justice, perhaps this matter, uh, you may not have jurisdiction to treat this because this matter is supposed to be treated in CAS. Exactly. That is what we're saying. But doesn't that happen in all these court cases before they are given? Uh, okay. It, uh, well, I don't know how this, uh, these people who go to the regular courts, how to go about it. You understand me? Because, but the point is that we are not just doing the right thing in this country. Even if you are a genuine football stakeholder, you should know that the place to go to when you have issues is not to go to the regular court, to go and uh, uh, bring the game to disrepute. That is basically what they are doing. Okay, so have we been able to sort out what happens to those who know that this matter should be taken to CAS, but you take it to a regular court? They are banned from football activities. Okay, look Does at the for instance. Will he be banned? in court at the moment. Yes. Yesterday, when he went to the NFF and he was locked out by the staffers of NFF and all that, he couldn't gain access to the place. They asked him, what of if he and Francis Nigeria? He said he has a case in CAS. So how can somebody who has a case in CAS still be talking about having a case in, in a just high court? These are contradictory issues. But the point is this. The earlier we tell ourselves the truth, the better for us, Chamberlain. Because the way it is, if we continue in this stead, the FIFA hammer will come. And at the end of the day, why do we put selfish interests above national interest? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Then why do we embarrass ourselves before the international community? Nigeria is not the only country, for Christ's sake, that is in FIFA. And if we know we are not ready to abide by the rules and regulations of FIFA, then we can jolly well back out. We have not been forced to be part of FIFA. But if we must remain a part of FIFA, we should be able to do the right things. We shouldn't go to the international community to be embarrassing ourselves. There's also word that uh, there was that court order that we were not supposed to have proceeded with the election. But, but we know that we the first election ahead. in Abuja was not done in line with FIFA statutes, with NFF statutes. Who okay, are those that voted in the Chida election? They were not the el uh, elective congress of FIFA. The elective uh, of NFF, the elective congress of NFF it, uh, comprises of state FA chairmen and some professional bodies like the referee's body, the coach's body, and all that. Were, were they the people that voted in Chida? The answer is no. How do you bring all manner of characters from nowhere to come and conduct an election? And at the end of the day, you, you are holding on to that mandate. We know that those who voted in the Chida election were not the people who are supposed to vote. They are not part of the NFF Electoral uh, uh, Congress. Okay, so but we should be doing the right thing, Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. The right thing has been done. It, could, it still has some flaws anyway in worry, but that, uh, that is a way forward. No, no, uh, two things now. The election in worry, on the one hand. Yes. Sanctioned but, by FIFA. No, no, before the sanction. Proceeding with the election, yes. because if that judgment says, hold on, do not proceed with the election. Was that judgment out of place? Because the judgment was not necessarily, it didn't have to do with the election but What itself. they are saying is that they were not sacked before the election. All the people who are supposed to be served said they were not served before the election, they worry. So if somebody was not served with a court injunction, how do you, I don't know, all these other technicalities. But truth be told, Chamberlain, the point is this. No matter the way we look at it, those who are taking football matters to regular courts are not being sincere with this country. And if 
we must respect the statutes of FIFA, which we are part of. We know that we should not go to, to the regular courts to bring this game to disrepute. We should, people who are aggrieved should go to, to take the regular uh, channel. If the election is even conducted, there's an appeals committee that you can go to. And after, even all this crisis started after the World Cup. The minister who wanted to remove my Gary and co did not go about it the right way. And my Gary himself, despite all his achievements, did not go about conducting election that the sec uh, for his second term the right way. So it's, it's, it's just a vicious cycle of people not being sincere to themselves. My Gary's board performed very well. Rather than uh, uh, go to this uh, uh, chariot of banning people for 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years, you should have used your achievements to campaign for a second term. If they give you a second term, fine and good. If they don't give you, go back to your back home and sleep. Why ban people unnecessarily? You banned Baribote for 15 years. You banned Tawo Gunjobi for 10 years. I mean, even FIFA has not banned anybody for 10 years, no matter how vicious the crime is. But you sit down here in Nigeria, you ban people for 10 years, you ban people for 15 years, because you don't want them to be part of an election that should be open for everybody. But my Gary's, apart from the late Emeka Omeru's board, I have not seen any other board that performed like that of my Gary. So what my Gary and Co should have done is to throw the field open for everybody to contest. But rather than do that, the board was really banning those who were perceived opponents of theirs. And that is the genesis of all this problem. So now, so now, now that this case matter is supposed to come up tomorrow. People not being sincere with themselves. If we are sincere with ourselves, and even when the political opponents now wanted to push Megari out, the way the ministry, NSC and all that, the minister went about it was not the proper way. So that is what has brought us to where we are today. The log jam that we have today is because people are not sincere.